When I first met him in the uh, Glastonbury in 94, 93 or something, it was like a fan, do you know what I mean? And But now it's kind of gone. Out. Once you've had to throw someone out of your house a couple of times at seven in the morning and, you know, nearly got in fights with him, that kind of thing ceases to exist anymore. And he's like, you know, you're kind of his mate, you know what I mean? And the kind of, it's just like mates playing music to each other. Uh, when I first met Paul, um, was on the War Child album, we're doing a track together, and um, it was a good session, you know, because there were a few guys there, there was, uh, Noel Gallagher was there as well, and um, my memory of it actually is liking Paul, um, knowing his history from the Jam and Style Council, uh, and then hearing him play a bit of piano, and he was playing kind of country and western piano. I thought that was interesting. I mean, I, I don't know why I expected him to play, but anyway, he played a little bit of that. So it was a good session, I enjoyed it. For me, it was, you know, when I first heard the jam, and I saw them on this DVD I bought, and the way he played guitar and his attack, and his, his vocal, and even his, his comes to his moves on stage, it, it, that was the thing that I was like, wow, this that really had an impact on me, and then, you delve into all his work and the different sort of different types of records he's made, made, and he's never afraid to sort of change as well over the years, which is something that is inspiring, you know, because I think change can be a good thing without forgetting you, you know, who you are and stuff. But you shouldn't be afraid to sort of try things and. And sometimes it will work and sometimes it won't, but that's something that encourages me, you know. Yeah. It's all pop art, I guess, is what it is. He's constantly seeing what works and throwing stuff at a canvas and take that bit out, put that in there, and what if we do that, you know. I, I'm, I'm not sure he's the kind of dude that sits and strums the guitar anymore and writes a song in one go, which is why he's, he's, um, the stuff that he's doing over the last three or four albums has been amazingly interesting. I mean, like me, he's uh, looked for other ways to do his music. You know, originally was in the jam, as everyone knows. And then he went to Style Council, changing the whole thing, a little bit like me, Beatles and then Wings. Um, and then since, yeah, he's, he's adapted um, into, into other ways of playing and other ways of getting his music across. So it is a bit similar to what I've done. I think the real reason is just that you love music, you know. My favourite single from this period would be um, Echoes Round the Sun and it's on the 22 Dreams record and I think it's, I do believe it was written with Noel Gallagher and Gem Archer and it's just um, a really cool sort of song, I love the rhythm of it, I love the lyrics on it, it's kind of, the sort of slightly sort of abstract which is something that's quite hard to do really without without you sounding weird, you know what I mean? But they, it's done perfect on that tune. And, and it's a song that I've played with Paul a couple of times live and it's been very fun to play. We'd always tried to write songs down the years. And maybe Oasis was working on something at the time. And I had a drum loop, which was from the demo of Stop the Clocks, which was on my Blast solo record. And I had this distorted drum loop and uh, I said, well, I've got this, let's try and write something around this. And uh, he, uh, he'd had it for about three weeks and I went down to the studio and he said, today was the day we were gonna do it. And I said, so what have you done to the loop? He went, nothing. And um, I was like, well, not anything. He went, no, have you got anything? And I was like, no, you know, I've been making a record. And uh, so it was like fly by the seat of your pants stuff. I sat there with a bass and he got on a, a xylophone. The demo to that is truly insane. And uh, we, uh, we kind of, we messed around with the chords and we got it together and he uh, sat at the back of the studio when we were putting down the backing track and was scribbling bits of lyrics down and he got up and did one of his things. And then the, the great bit about that and is the bit where it speeds up in the middle. Steve Craddock was there and he just said, oh, can I do something on the drums for this bit? And we were like, yeah, go on. And he got in there and he did that bit where it speeds up and it kind of really made the song. And it was, it was a great joint effort, you know. And he, um, 
he got strings on it and that and um, that was it, the first song we ever wrote together. It was um it's a funny old day. Yeah. Paul would allow me to play anything really and so Son of Dying that we I would do um I'd end up playing drums or the bass or bits of guitar or you know percussion. It wasn't just sort of coming down as being a guitar player and uh, and I make a nice cup of tea as well. My favourite Waller gig from this period, probably on a selfish one, was the first time when we'd met and we'd done some writing and he asked us to get up with him at the Roundhouse in London and, and we played that song, Echoes Round the Sun, together. And it was the first time, you know, I'd ever got up on stage with him. So for me, that was uh, definitely enjoyable, you know, and, and it was uh, a little moment in my, in my mind. You know. I got to he live on the floor, rolls up. Call it to call him if you like that touch. I call it what you will. I really don't care too much. And he'd say that some nights when he does gigs, he could feel the energy rise from the floorboards up, you know. And uh, he, he said it to himself one night and wrote it down. There you go. Great title for a song. And, and it was the first kind of song he'd written a long time, which was, you know, two and a half minutes long. And he was really excited about that. And then he'd call me up. So you got to hear this track. You know, it's, I think it's only two minutes and 20 seconds. And uh, I instantly liked the title, and when I heard it, that was like, wow, that's kind of got, that's gone back full circle to almost in the city kind of thing, you know. And it was urgent. When you hear it, it's like really it should have been written by somebody 20 years younger, do you know what I mean? And that, I think, seemed to set off something in him. It's brilliant, and when you see him play it live, it's ex amazing. It's great to see all the fat skinheads bopping up and down to it. I find it highly amusing. <laughs> He's got a great vocal live, I think, which I don't think is uh, mentioned that much, really. I think he's got a really powerful voice and a really emotive voice. And also, I think his nerves send him to a place um, that um, makes it very intense. I guess for, for many people to have two greatest hits of you know, how many years is it? 30 years or something, you know, to, to, to sort of do that is uh, is an achievement for sure, you know what I mean? To to have a career that long and so constant and have great songs that last for so long is, uh, is unreal really, you know. Difficult to say what makes a great artist, but I think there has to be a love of music um, involved. Uh, and then I think you've got to be good at it. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to be able to play your instrument. You've got to be able to sing. And in his case, in my case, you've got to be able to write. I think once you get that all together, I think that, that can make you into a great artist, you know. First time that me and Paul met properly was, um, it was at this radio thing about two and a half years ago, three years ago. And I've been referencing a French singer called Jacques Dutron, who's a sharp sort of mod and from the 60s. And his early stuff's really cool, sort of, you know, quite sort of garagey, quite moddy. He come over to me and had this book on sort of men's fashion from the 60s. And he says, oh, you really like this singer, don't you? And he, you know, he sort of knew that I was into him and that was, I was like, wow, how'd you know that? And he's like, oh, no. And that was our sort of little bond, really, I guess, and it sort of broke the ice. I guess. It was obvious from the beginning that he, he liked the kind of 60s dress. I was very influenced by that growing up. In fact, on the first session we did together, uh, a couple of the guys on that session um, were saying, the big question they had for me was, have you kept your clothes from the 60s? I was going, uh, yeah, I said, got some of them. Can we see them? You know, it was that influential for them. So, uh, yeah, I think it's cool, you know, to like dressing cool. Um, I like it. <laughs> like to take the crazy shirt. But um, he likes it. It's something you can see, you know, he likes, his, uh, he likes the look. But for me, as I say, you know, the fact that it came from the Beatles, the mod look in the 60s, is a tribute, you know, that it doesn't go unnoticed. Any anecdotes? Honestly, I love the guy so much, I haven't got any for you because they're all insane. I've seen him take his clothes off and give them to people in the street. I've seen a kid come up to him once and say, I'm a pun. That's how that is. 
I really like that shirt. And he just took it off and gave it him. And then sat in the pub topless. Yep. They sat in the pub topless for the rest of the day. And I've known him for such a long time and I've been in such different you know, tour buses with him and on tour with him and he's been on tour with us and you know he played on Morning Glory and all that. We've got we've got we've been doing it for a long time. Well, there's never been any like, oh wow, there's Paul Weller, you know, it's like, he's been over 20 years now, you know what I mean, so, all that. No, it's just me, mate. Not just me, mate, but he's been.